Question 21 from Paper 1 of the 2023 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A student carries out an experiment to determine the EMF and the internal resistance of a battery using the circuit shown. The resistance of the variable resistor is altered and the reading on the voltage V and the current I are taken and these readings are then used to produce the following graph. And what we asked... We're asked to find the EMF of the cell and the internal resistance of it. Let's go back to the circuit again and know our way around the circuit. We know that in the cell itself, represented by the dotted lines, everything inside the dotted lines is the inside the cell. We have the EMF, where the columns of charge gain the initial energy. But we've also got internal resistance to go through, and this part here, this internal resistor R, we're going to lose volts here. And the lost volts is going to be equated to the current I times the internal resistance of the cell IR. Now that means what we have available at the terminals is going to be V and it's going to be equal to the terminal potential difference. We can do a bit of accountancy here and say, well, we start off with the voltage, what we're left with, and the terminal potential difference is going to be V. That's going to equal to what you started with, what you gained first of all was E, the EMF, and what you lost was the lost volts I times R. Now, a bit of revision for us, I can change that equation into this form here. V is equal to minus RI plus E. And you might wonder, why have I done that? Because I've done it because it's very much like the gradient of a straight line equation, equation of a straight line. Because my V really is the y-axis in this graph, and my i is really the x-axis in the graph, the current is the x-axis. And therefore, the gradient m is going to equal to minus the internal resistance, and the part where the graph cuts the y-axis, when x is zero, is going to give us the value for the electromagnetic force, the EMF. And that's why I've done that particular equation like that, to put it in the form of y equals mx plus e. So first of all, we have to find out what the EMF is, and all I have to do is just produce that graph backwards, I'll just represent it by this red line here. And you can see that the graph cuts the y-axis at a value of 6. That means the EMF is going to equal to 6 volts. So the EMF E is going to equal to 6 volts. And that's the first part done. Now to work out the gradient of the graph, which is going to give us the negative, the internal resistance from the equation. I want you to choose two points on it, and the points you're going to choose are going to be this point here, which is that one there, and we're going to choose that one there. So this first point here, you can see that it's going to be 0 0.5 across and 5 up. So I can put it down like that, 0 0.5 and 5 up. Remember, this is the x-axis, and that's the y-axis. And the other point is going to be this one here, which is 2.5 along and 1 up. So 2.5 and 1 up like that. Remember, this is the x, and that's the y. That's x2, if you can call that, and that's y2. So the gradient is going to be the difference in the y-coordinates divided by the distance in the x-coordinates. So let's be very careful here. We start off with y1. This one here, and it's going to be this other y coordinate, so 5, take away 1 is going to give us 4. And then we're going to have this here, 0 0.5, the x coordinate, take away 2.5, you're going to get minus 2. So that's going to give us a gradient of minus 2, and we know that's correct because the gradient of the line is sloping downwards. So if m equals minus 2, the internal resistance is actually going to be equal to 2 ohms according to our equation. So we're looking for the response, we have 6 volts for the EMF and the internal resistance being equal to 2. 6 volts, internal resistance 2, and our answer is going to be the response E. EMF 6 volts, internal resistance 2 ohms. Question 22 from the 2023 Higher Physics Exam Paper 1. One coulomb per volt is equivalent to one, and it gives you five possible responses in. So we've got a unit of a coulomb, and we're dividing that by a unit of a volt. So what is the coulomb usually associated with? It's the charge Q. And what is a volt? It's going to be the voltage V. So we're looking for a relationship which has got the charge divided by the voltage, and that will be a capacitor. So a capacitance 
is going to be equal to Q over V uh, to give you the units of coulomb per volt and capacitance is measured in the farad. So our answer to that question is going to be the farad. One farad is equal to one coulomb per volt. Answer 21B. Question 23 from paper 1 of the 2023 Higher Physics exam from the SQA. A student makes the following statements about metals, insulators and semiconductors. Statement 1. In some metals, the valence and conduction bands overlap and each band is partially filled. Statement 2. The band gap between the valence band and the conduction band in an insulator is very large compared to the band gap in a semiconductor. And statement 3. An increase in temperature decreases the conductivity of the semiconductor. Which of these statements is or are correct? Well, let's refresh our memory by looking at the three band diagrams for metal, insulator and semiconductor. Well, you're right with the metal. The valence band does overlap the conduction band, but they're not what is described in the question. In the question it says here, the statement says, in some metals, the valence and conduction bands overlap, which is true, and each band is partially filled. Well, the valence band is not partially filled. The valence band is actually full, but it's overlapped into the conduction band, and therefore the electrons in the valence band can move into the conduction band. So statement one is actually untrue. So we'll mark across at statement one. So statement one is untrue. Statement 2, the band gap between the valence band and the conduction band in an insulator is large compared to the band gap in a semiconductor. And that's correct. In an insulator, the band gap is much bigger than the band gap in a semiconductor between the valence and the conduction band. So statement 2 is going to be correct. Statement 3, an increase in temperature decreases the conductivity of a semiconductor. Well, that's going to be false. Because in a semiconductor, the band gap is actually quite small. And so if you heat up the semiconductor, some of the electrons in the valence band can gain enough thermal energy to go into the conduction but into the conduction band like that and therefore increase the conductivity of the semiconductor to make it a better conductor. We've got here the phrase that's going to uh, decrease the conductivity. So out of those three statements, only two is correct. And therefore, the answer is going to be for 23, it's going to be B. Question 24 from the 2023 20, Higher Physics Examination from Paper 1. A group of students carry out an experiment to investigate how quantity P depends on quantity Q. The results of the experiment are plotted on the graph shown below. And it says further that the, a physics textbook states that the quantity P is directly proportional to quantity Q. The student makes the following statements about the line of best fit that should be drawn using all the data points plotted. And we've got statement 1, the line of best fit passes through the origin. Statement 2, the line of best fit does not pass through the origin. Statement 3, the line of best fit suggests the measurements have been affected by a systematic uncertainty. Well, let's go back and look at the graph again and we know that if we've got a quantity p directly proportional to quantity q we should be expecting a graph like that which passes through the origin and is a straight line that's the two clinchers that one quantity is directly proportional to another p directly proportional to q straight line passing through the origin now if we go to the graph of the students and draw the best fitting straight line through there you can see it's definitely not going to pass through the origin so right away we can actually go down and rule out one of the statements. We can say the line of best fit passes through the origin is in fact a false statement. The line of best fit does pass through the origin, so we can give that a tick there. Now, why is the student's graph, which looks perfectly like a good relationship, but it's not passing through the origin? It tells a very important thing. It tells us that maybe there's some systematic error which is causing us to measure the quantity Q a lot higher than what it should be. Uh, and also, maybe quantity P should be a lot uh, lower uh, than what it should be because we're getting this, 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 this distance down here. Because really what we should be getting is this graph to go up like that through the origin. So you can see we have shifted the graph along the Q axis and also shifted it down the P axis, which means that there's a systematic error in P or Q so that the line does not go through the origin. So... Statement number three 
says the following. It says, The line of best fit suggests the measurements have been affected by a systematic uncertainty is correct. So, out of those statements, two and three are correct. And you can see we have got a response which is correct, E. Question 25, the last question in Paper 1 of the 2023 Higher Physics Examination. The mass M of a vibrating string can be determined using the following relationship. And you've got the frequency is going to equal to the square root of the tension divided by 4 times the mass times the length of the string. And you're, there you're given what the values are there. F is the fundamental frequency, which is 110 hertz. T is the tension, 92 newtons, and L, the length being 0 0.63 metres. They're all in the, the usual units, so we don't have to change any of the units. But what we have to do is rearrange that formula so that we can get the subject to be the mass. And it's really just really algebra here. So we start off with the equation up here. So we can say the frequency F is going to equal to the square root of T divided by 4 ml. Now we can square both sides and we get frequency squared is going to equal to T over 4 ml. And we want to get the mass out of that. So if we cross multiply, so just put a 1 over that and cross multiply, we have got uh, F squared 4m times L is going to equal to T, the tension. And we want to find out what this mass is here, so we've got to divide both sides by F squared times 4 times L. So the mass M is going to equal to the tension T divided by, and it's going to be the frequency. We'll start off with 4 first of all, so it's a number. 4 times the frequency squared times the length L. And that's our relationship for that particular finding the mass. Now all we've got to do is put in our numbers and put in the numbers as following. We can say M is going to equal to the tension T, which is 92 newtons, divided by 4 and it's going to be multiplied by F squared. So it's going to be 110 all squared multiplied by the length 0 0.63. So really it boils down to rearranging the formula and then not making a mistake on your calculator. So if we bring our calculator in right now, we can see how this is done. i drag my calculator over here. Uh, there it is there. And plug in the numbers. So first of all we start with 92. 92 divided by, and we put a bracket around, that's why you always put brackets around things in the, in the denominator and the numerator. So 92 divided by 4 times the 110 all squared, so we square that, and times 0 0.63. 0 0.63, don't forget to score in your, your bracket. And our answer is going to be 23 over 7623. Most pupils, uh, most people think, well, what am I going to do after that one? But just press this button here, the SD button, and that gives you the final answer. And you can see the final answer is going to be 3.0. Uh, if we round up to that, that place there, just bring a calculator back up. 3.017, so we'll call that 3.0 times 10 to minus 3. Okay, so it's going to be 3.0 times 10 to the minus 3, and it's, since it's mass, it's going to be kilograms. And the answer we're looking for, if we look down the list, is going to be 3 times 10 to the minus 3, it's going to be A. So the last answer for the 2023 20, multiple choice question will be A.